Welcome back everyone to The Creeper's Code. This is episode four of our TCC data pack mini series and I'm really excited to show you guys some cool new stuff that I've been working on recently. Uh, so I recently found some mushrooms and I now have myself some fermented spider eyes, which actually means that I can make the, the fur thing. I, let me see, I've got, I've got the insidian shards here for it already. I, I've got to try and find all the right stuff now because it's all it's all strewn about in random chests. Uh, okay, blaze rods, one, two, three, four. So I think if I remember correctly, it's uh, the fermented spider eye in the middle Obsidian shards here, and blaze rods there? No, other way around, okay. <laughs> that would be a nice kind of recipe if, the, if you could do it both ways, to be completely honest. So th there's another recommendation for you, Creeper, if you are watching. Um, the, the ability to reverse the order of the items here would be cool, but I, I understand that's a, a difficult thing to do. Um, or not, well, it's not difficult, but it's not necessary. Never mind. Anyway, obsidian mirror, this thing's really cool. Uh, it only has a durability of 20, so I think we're going to do an experiment with this one right now. So I recently went fishing quite a bit, uh, simply because I got myself a crap load of pork chops from farming up some hoglins in the nether. I, I died, by the way, hence why the XP has gone down, but it's gone up quite again. Uh, it's gone up again quite quickly because of our lapis lazuli ring, which is amazing. Uh, as you can see over here, a swordfish. I got myself a fucking swordfish. I never thought that would happen. It's quite literally just a sword that's a fish. Um... You can eat it. <laughs> it's a tropical fish. It's got four attack damage and two attack speed. It's actually got really high attack speed. If you think about how much attack speed like an axe has, swords have 1.4, this thing has two. So this thing's actually really good and it doesn't have durability either. So it's actually a pretty good weapon, to be completely honest with you. And of course, you can eat it. So maybe we'll use a swordfish in the future. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, I've got myself puffer fish. I want to see what happens when I try and reverse fucking, you know, um, nausea. What, what, what's going to happen? I, I want to find out. So, I don't have any hunger, of course. <laughs> Makes sense. I, f I feel like with weird food items like pufferfish, you shouldn't have to have hunger in order to eat them, because they are weird. But anyway, yeah, we're, we're going to keep this in our hop off for now, and, and basically find out what we're going to do. If you haven't seen it already from today's thumbnail, we are going to be trying to go to the end today. Uh, not to fight the ender dragon, but simply to kind of take out um, that that list of things to do basically. Uh, I want to find out where it actually is and I also want, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I, I want to find where the end of the portal actually is so we can go back there to the, in the future uh, but I also just want to go to the fortress as well so that we can make use of the things that we can find over there. Uh, I'm going to put the blaze powder in the brewing stand. I also have some weakness potions now so if we capture ourselves a zombie villager which I've set up a trap for right here we do actually have the stuff for it. I've actually already captured two zombie villagers by pure chance but I just didn't have brown mushrooms for ages, which has made me want to change the fermented spider eye recipe to be able to use brown mushrooms, red mushrooms, or either fungus, because it would be much easier to get an item which isn't really that big of a deal, because I just simply couldn't find, specifically, a brown mushroom for ages, and now we have those items. So I've got some ideas for Artibus from that as well. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, I'm going to use these eyes of ender to locate the end portal, and we're going to bring some obsidian and hopefully set up a portal over there as well. So let me see, I've got some obsidian here. Uh, do I have flint and steel? Yes, I do. Uh, how much obsidian do I use for a ball? 12 plus 2, 14, two more. Okay, let's see which direction it goes in, shall we? That way, okay, interesting. I've kind of been looking, really, the first one already? <laughs> okay. Um, I've kind of been looking forward to um, exploring this direction anyway, so I'm definitely going to do that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try and be smart about this, even though we do have loads of pearls and we really don't need to bring 12. Um, obviously, you know, usually I think you need around 10, you know, 9 or 10 pearls to finish the portal, really, uh, but I'm going to try and keep as many as I can just in case. Um, but yeah. Usually what I would do in this situation when looking for the end portal is run about 100 or 200 blocks, throw another one, and then just kind of keep doing that over and over again uh, and seeing if we're heading in the right direction. But yeah, the reason why I want to do this in today's episode, though, is because I wanted to talk a little bit while I am looking for the end portal. Um, unfortunately, I have been having a bit of a struggle recently in terms of workload in real life. If I'm completely honest with you, I am procrastinating hard right now. I have a bunch of deadlines coming up, three or four deadlines coming up in the next few weeks, in the next three weeks, actually. Um, and honestly, I haven't really done much work for any of them, as is the university student lifestyle. I, I saw a meme on Reddit the other day uh, that basically said, you know, um, COVID students saying that the online learning is shit, but also COVID students not turning up to online lectures because they're shit. So yeah, I, I can't really blame uh, anyone, unfortunately. It is my own fault. Um, this is the first time in my life that I've realized how unequipped I am for online education because oh my god is it rubbish, but oh my god does it not work for me at all. So I am really behind on my work. Um, for those of you that don't re realize, if you're not in the Discord group or anything like that, I have actually been working on Celeste 020 recently, which is a complete recreation of Celeste. The pack is 100% different to what it was before. I am currently using 
Kelest 020 uh, for those that don't realize. The pack is actually almost finished. I would say it's around 90, 90 to 95% finished. I'm just going to finish off uh, a few key features before I put it in a release state, simply because I know that I'm not going to be working on it for quite some time after this update. Um, obviously, as I said before, in terms of busyness, I have been struggling a little bit in terms of workload. And holy shit, my snow is very white, isn't it? I, this is my first time seeing my snow in survival mode, but I kind of like it though. Let's throw another one. Still in that direction, perfect. I was hoping that it wouldn't back on myself. Um, simply because it'd be, it'd be weird if, if it, the stronghold was just like 100 blocks away from where I live. <laughs> That'd be rather strange. Uh, but yeah, so basically my plans are currently to finish Calesti 020 because I want to get it out of the way and I want to update the downloads because currently Calesti 0193 has over 12,000 downloads. It has four times as many downloads as any update I've made prior to this one, um, which is crazy to be honest with you but the only reason why that's the case is because i haven't touched the pack i haven't updated the download now for about six months just because i've been working on Calesti light uh, and not been as available to work on packs because of you know doing more stuff in real life spending time with friends things like that um and that's about it really my, my kind of rule for these things for these things you know like hobbies as i consider them is that if at any point it feels more like a chore than a hobby then i drop it right away because it's at that point that i start producing crap that i'm not happy with uh, and that usually just results in me, you know, creating stuff that I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be entirely satisfied with and deleting it later, which effectively is just a complete waste of time. So I would much rather be um, really forgiving with myself for how much work I'm actually getting done and then come back to it in the future and work on stuff and make it much, much better. Uh, but yeah, once Calesti 020 is finished, I will be taking a break from YouTube um, for at least a month or two, I think. Um, I've never actually done that before. I've always said... Um, Throw another one. Yeah, there we go. I've always said that when I take a break from YouTube or anything like that, again, really, okay, um, I can never really stay away from this for that long because I just really enjoy doing it. I really, really do. Um, you know, doing YouTube for me is, is never is never been a chore. I, I love editing videos. I love making stupid videos. I love doing all this, you know, Minecraft crap with different resource packs and data packs and all the different experiments that we perform. And oh, my new light maps. That's too yellow. <laughs> That's way too yellow. Oh dear. That is way too yellow. Maybe I need to change that. Oh my god. What the hell is that? I, I just I just cut recording because someone someone entered my flat and they, I, they, I, they left something at my flat the other day so I was giving it back to them. But what the fuck is that? That's a new structure. That is so exciting. I want to see what that is. Okay, n see, now the light map's fine because it's gone kind of like a, a, a browny orangey color for the sunset. But that yellow before was far too yellow, so I'm going to have to change that definitely. Oh, what? What? <laughs> what? What? Seriously? Is it there? It's right fucking here, isn't it? That is so... I, I swear to God, I did not pick this seed. I did not pick this seed. That is so lucky. What the heck? <laughs> what? That is the stronghold, right? That isn't like some TCC structure. I'm pretty sure that's the stronghold. Okay, well, that's easy. Nice. More importantly, let's see what this is over here. Nice. Anyway, so as I was talking about before, um, I'm basically going to take a little... Oh, and a village as well. This place is great. Um, I'm basically going to take a little bit of a break from YouTube for the next couple of months, uh, simply because... Um, right now, the thing that's troubling me the most, the thing that's on my mind, is obviously I do have exams coming up, which are very important. They're end of year exams, end of year assignments. Uh, and I do want to try and focus on them properly um, so I get a decent grade, obviously. That's understandable. Um, but at the same time, I also want to spend some time with friends over summer as well. I'm looking forward to COVID restrictions lifting over summer. You know, it's April 14th as I'm recording this. It was two days ago uh, that shops started to open and pubs are now serving outside in the UK, which is really exciting, to be honest. It's, it's a really nice, nice thing to have access to again. Um, um, just because I've, I, I've been a uni student for a year now, and obviously not done the usual thing. Oh, really hoping I wouldn't get hit by that. Actually, speaking of... Look at that! That's so cool! We have speed now! No you! <laughs> that's amazing! That is so cool! How much... Yeah, one durability. But you, you can put mending and unbreaking on this thing. That's so cool! I went from having slowness to having speed. That's amazing. Awesome. Oh, camo creepers. Yay. Calesti 020 things. Very cool. Um, but yeah. 
So yeah, obviously what I want to do is I want to kind of like round off Kalesti 020 because I know I won't be able to focus on anything until it's absolutely finished, which it almost is. Uh, and then once it's been rounded off, I'm going to basically take a break from Kalesti, start working on uni assignments, probably for three weeks straight, to be honest. And then once all my assignments have been submitted and everything's finished and rounded off, uh, at that point then I want to start spending a lot of time with friends. I want to go visit my friends back home and obviously go to the pub because they're open again now. That is a pillager outpost. That is so cool. We're going to go raid that in a second for sure, but I'm going to keep speaking for a second. Uh, and obviously at that point, I'm not really going to have as much time to work on this stuff. Um, there was a recent thing that happened to me, which which kind of made me question things a little bit. Um, for those of you that don't know, I, I, I do put a lot of time into this and what I do. Um, I put a lot of time into it, basically. I actually currently am trying to start up a business, um, which is called Inverted Cube, which I'm very excited about, uh, purely for the sake of putting all my projects onto Bedrock, onto the Marketplace Store, and obviously getting paid for it. Um, I've never I've never wanted to get money out of this before. I've never asked you guys to give money. Um, I've never said that I wanted to make anything of it. I don't even have ad revenue on my channel, obviously, but I still do it because I enjoy it. If I can get money out of it in the future, though, it would be amazing. So I, I am currently trying to do something along those lines. That was very bright. My light maps are in work in progress at the moment, okay? <laughs> it's a work in progress resource pack, what can I say? Um, so anyway, yeah, there was a conversation the other day that happened in a group chat, and I kind of want this guy to get me slowness now. Oh no, don't hit me with your slowness arrow. Oh no, I've been... Oh wait, hang on. Oh no, I've been slowed. Uh, oh wait, no, I haven't. It's speed now. Amazing, that's so cool. Um, very cool feature to me. But yeah, what happened recently was... Um, there was a group chat happening with some friends, and they basically had a conversation on the group chat for like, you know, two hours, basically. Um, and I looked at my phone after being on Discord and talking about random, you know, Minecraft resource pack stuff with people for, for hours on end, which is something that I do quite regularly do. Um, and then obviously I checked my phone to see that this whole conversation had just happened, and I just kind of missed out on it. And it made me have a moment where I was thinking to myself, I maybe I'm not allowing myself free time right now like every time that i have free time to myself all i do is i work on project stuff uh, like occasionally i'll treat myself to some future armor while i'm eating some food but usually 99.9% .9 of the time if i have free time it's spent on this stuff which i'm usually more than happy to do but at this point i'm kind of just wondering what what are things going to be like if i allow myself to take an extended break like that's a, effectively a holiday for me right so you can kind of see why I'm, why I'm thinking about it. Like, I, I don't feel burned out. Like, I don't feel like I need to take a break. I kind of just feel like I want to know what things would be like if I did, basically. So, so that's about the best explanation I can give you. But, uh, yeah, that's about, that's about it, really. There, there isn't really much more to it. It's not a deep. I'm not burned out. I'm not sad. I'm just kind of, like, thinking to myself, I want to just enjoy summer. You know, the COVID restrictions are going to be coming out soon. Um, and yeah, I want to go to the pub with my friends, and I want to I want to chill with people, and I want to have a good time, basically. So I'm probably going to be taking a little bit of a break from this. And honestly, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to try to take a break from this because it's just come so naturally for me to just do it all the time now. Um, but yeah, that's about it, really. But yeah, do not think for a second that this means that any of my projects are going to die down, that they're going to get cancelled or anything like that. Um, some of you will know already that I have plans to eventually um, retire Kalesti Light simply because it's become too much of a distraction away from Kalesti um, as of recently. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. I I'm still planning on releasing a lot of these things in the future, obviously, uh, but probably more so after the summer has finished and once I'm started back at my second year of university. Um, I, I guess that that's about it really. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'm terrified to explore this thing. My helmet just broke and I do not have a shield. Um, I think a shield would be required. Those are... Oh, are they chillages? Oh my god, that's so cool. I wish I had a spyglass right now so I could look at them properly. But I think they're like semi-unloaded because I'm not nearby them. There's a pillager over there and obviously a vindicator on the roof. Um, I actually, I really want to come back and raid this place now. Hello. Don't get mad at me, please. It looks really cool though and there's obviously like banners everywhere. I wonder if this place has like an underground section because I think a lot of creepers structures do have underground bits. So that would be really cool, actually. I think we're going to have a look at that in a minute. But, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly set up another portal where the nether fortress actually... Uh, not nether fortress, where the end portal actually is. Um, and, yeah, then we'll come back and raid this this structure. I don't know what this is called. Wait, let me see if we can read about it. Let's see. Um, that's it. Tundra Creep. That's the one. Tundra Creep is a heavily guarded snowy illager fort surrounded by isologers and pillagers. Inside the structure, there are several valuable loot chests and the main treasure, the Frost Bloom. Oh, oh. 
The Vosh Bloom is an incredible potent magical flower found in the Tundra Keep. It freezes blocks, makes snow around it, damages blazes and heals snow golems. It also drops Frost Bloom petals when bone mealed. And Frost Bloom petals, when eaten, these petals give you regeneration as well as slowness and an icy screen overlay. They are dropped by Frost Blooms when bone mealed and are dropped by strays and isologers. They can be made into T2. Interesting. Now, weirdly enough, I didn't get any from the strays that we've been killing just now. Oh, hello. <laughs> How far is your vision range, sir? I don't have a shield. I feel exposed. But there we go. Uh, so yeah, I think what I'm going to do... The sun's coming up, that's actually really cool. Yeah. I'm going to set up the portal to the end fortress now. Uh, and we're going to head home, get myself a shield, and we're going to come back. And we're going to raid this thing because I want to see what loot we can actually get from it. This has got to be the most ridiculously lucky thing I've ever done in my life. I dropped down into this ravine, obviously the fortress is exposed, and there's diamonds right here. Like, what? What? Why am I so lucky today? This is ridiculous. Okay, okay, so I may have a lot of complaints about the way that strongholds generate, but what the fuck? This is a, this is a dungeon. This is a fucking dungeon, and the spawn... <laughs> This spawner got replaced with a silverfish block, but it's a dungeon. What? 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 Well, we found it. That took ages. I really, really, to this day, we're one short. <laughs> we're one short. Of course we are. Uh, I really, to this day, I hate the layout of strongholds. Like, it's just, it's just, it's so annoying. Like, like I don't. Oh, look at the way these things generate. It's so ugly. Like, I, I didn't even find it through this corridor, okay? I was running through this, like, th this cave way, which just links links all the corridors together, and I found it, like, here. This is where I found it. I found it from this side, and then realized that by going back around here and going through here again, it was literally just, you know, a right turn. It, it's so dumb. Like, these structures are so overdue for an upgrade, but it's like it's like the Nether Fortress in the 116 update. You know, they they didn't update it, but why? Why? Their, their justification for why they didn't upgrade Nether Fortresses was not everyone has had a chance to explore them yet. But I'm sure everyone would really appreciate the chance to explore a better Nether Fortress. Am I wrong? <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Who knows? You no, know, you can go away because you're really annoying. I don't know why. I oh, get rid. <laughs> Get rich. <laughs> I hate silverfish. They're really annoying. Um, right, okay, anyway. I'm going to put, put my portal anyway. Um, I think... How, how far down are we? 17. Jesus Christ. I think I'm going to put the portal in this room. And then we will have... Um, We'll have, we'll have a staircase going up to the surface so we can come back and get that tundra keep. So I'm going to break some part of the wall here. Oh, no. What? 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 Did you see that? He just, like, disappeared. Weird. I think I think he immediately reburrowed into a nearby block, if I'm correct. Uh, but yeah. TCC does actually give you the ability to still touch silverfish blocks, which would be a cool thing to experiment with. Uh, but again, I've never experimented with that, so we'll have to see this for another video. One, two, three, and that's going to be our nether portal. All I have to do now is take a note of the coordinates, which is minus 880 by minus... That's actually a really nice number to work with. That is literally... What is that? Minus 110 by minus 150. Like, exactly. That is really helpful. That's a really good coordinates. Okay, so what I'm going to do is leave this portal here. I'm going to light it. Uh, hopefully nothing just walks through that in the meantime and creates a portal, but it doesn't matter if it does. Uh, I'm going to go ahead in the nether, uh, tunnel over there, and basically, you know, set up the portal in the overworld. Uh, but in the meantime... Oh, no, no, no! Okay. In the meantime, all I have to do is dig back to the surface, uh, make sure that we can get access to that tundra keep when we come back, uh, and then run home, basically. So, yeah. Okay, home sweet home. I have no idea how long we were away for. Uh, so I'm going to have to check the recordings in just a moment. Last time we went to a whole 38 minute video, which was not the best situation. Uh, but thankfully, I think today's going to be a bit, a bit shorter, hopefully. Uh, and now that I've said that the video is going to be like 10 hours long, isn't it? But never mind. How many bookshelves do we need? I have a lot of XP and I want to spend it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 bookshelves. So 21 books in total. Uh, and a lot of wood. So let's see, like that, and like that. That, would put, that was perfect. That was so perfect. Okay. It would have been perfect if I hadn't done that. <laughs> um, okay, I need one more. Let me see. Was that all my dark oak wood? No, it was only some of it. Okay, so one more. 
into wooden planks and then into a bookshelf and then there we go okay so bookshelves one two three four five six seven okay there we go perfect so now we can get some enchanting doing uh i'm gonna get myself do i want to enchant this axe or a new axe i don't know um well we just got diamonds so we might have to get a new one right? so let's see i'm gonna get one two three um we need two sticks i'm so happy with my diamond texture i can't get over it like i i made it new recently and i love it so much it's it's I think my style's starting to become more and more clear all the time, and I love it. I think it's really cool. Uh, I'll get another lapis block as well, because we've got quite a bit of stuff to enchant. Uh, as usual, I'm going to check all the pieces of armor. So we've got pickaxe, efficiency four, not bad, but not amazing. Axe is going to be the same, isn't it? Yep. Uh, chest plate's going to be on breaking three, which is good. Uh, what would a book be? Piercing four. I have to say no. <laughs> I wish you could enchant horse armor in this. That would be really cool. Uh, although apparently Frostwalker does work with horses in this, which is quite interesting. Uh, can't enchant that directly. That's fine. Can't enchant that. Although you can have a fin infinity applied to a bucket of water, apparently, which is interesting. I wonder how that works. I bet it's just a carrot on a stick, probably, but never mind. Um, okay, well, efficiency four ain't that bad. Let's go with that. Efficiency four and I'm breaking three. Not bad at all. We've also got another efficiency four. Could easily put that on another pickaxe, and then we can get efficiency five. So I think we'll do that. So pickaxe... Efficiency 4. Just Efficiency 4. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Just Efficiency 4. That's brutal. What else have we got? Efficiency 4 again. Oh, Do we put it on a shovel or another pickaxe? We've got a few more enchantments. Yeah, let's do another pickaxe. Uh, efficiency 4. And I'm breaking 3. <laughs> give me fortune or silk touch, please. Oh, now you give me fortune. Now you give me fortune. Okay, well, well these pickaxes are kind of useless, so we'll just we'll, we'll disenchant one of them. Uh, wait, that one's... Well, let me think. That one's efficiency four. We don't need the unbreaking, so I might as well get more XP back. Okay, that's fine. So then we can go pickaxe, lapis, fortune three. And we've got fortune three and efficiency four, and efficiency four and unbreaking three. Absolutely perfect. Let's whack those in the anvil right now. So efficiency four and fortune three. Efficiency five, unbreaking three, fortune three. We have our perfect, perfect fortune pickaxe. Very nice. We'll this one back in the chest as well. Uh, and hopefully we can get some more XP and do some more enchanting in the near future. Uh, another enchanted book that I got from the, uh, from the stronghold. Pretty cool. Power 3, Unbreaking 3, and Loyalty 3. Loyalty 3 is quite a cool one, to be fair. I do like Tridents. It's a shame that Tridents is so hard to get in this game, though. Uh, right, I'm going to put all my stuff away in its appropriate chest, go into the nether, uh, dig to the correct spot, and we're going to teleport back over to the Stronghold, and then we're going to take on the Tundra Keep. Okay, so here we are back at the stronghold once again. I think we're going to save this for a future episode now. I don't really see a reason to go to the end just yet. I do really want to go because there are a lot of cool things that we can get from the end, such as the Gobble Rift. Obviously, there's the new End City editions that I actually uh, inspired Creeper to make with my End City basement from SGT version 2.5, I believe. Uh, we have quite a few cool things that we can work on right now. There's a, a lot of things that I have planned for future episodes as well. I want to have an episode based around tea, which we're going to do, which I think will be quite fun. Uh, obviously, I want to try and find the Woodland Mansion at some point because there's a really cool extension to the Woodland Mansion, which I believe was also kind of inspired by the idea of having basements underneath existing structures that already exist in the game. And of course, there are a few cool other things I want to go over, uh, especially the positional anchor, which again, does require for us to go to the end at some point. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'm going to go check out the new structure. I've been kind of excited to try this out for quite a while now. Why is the world unloaded? Okay. Uh, but yeah, basically the new structure, this pillager outpost type thing, which goes in the snowy tundra or the tundra keep as it's called, I believe it does have quite quite an interesting basement. And again, there are a lot of enemies for us to fight. Uh, oh no, he has the high ground. What am I going to do? Yes, it's fine. Okay, never mind. But yeah, I think they do actually have quite a lot of, of quite harsh enemies to fight. So I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's another day. I think that's the sun, isn't it? It's going to go night soon, isn't it? Oh, crap. <laughs> Why didn't I just bring a bed? I should have taken that into account. Never mind, let's go. Um, so yeah, this thing has ice ologers around it, which are an entirely new mob introduced by TCC. Now, the way that this is done is really quite impressive. What this guy actually is, he's a wandering trader that's wearing models on his body and head to simulate a body and head. And he has extra additional animated models. I, I have no idea what to do. This guy see me now. Let's What's he? I don't know what... Oh! <laughs> That's so cool. Wait, can I can I invert the slowness? Yes, I can. How long does it last for? 15 seconds. Not too bad. That's not too bad at all. But yeah, we can shoot this guy. It will work exactly as you expect if I can actually land my shots, which I can't because I'm crap. No. That is brutal. Just the fact that it's so it's so fast. 
Not for this guy. One, two. So yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Um, that's blue ice is quite helpful actually. You can get blue ice from these guys. That's awesome. See, part of me, part of me almost wants to keep one of these alive, but I don't. I don't know what you can do with them. So <laughs> there's not really any sort of need to, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, there's a little campfire here that's um, extinguished weirdly enough. I don't know why I'm doing that. That doesn't make a difference, does it? <laughs> It's still really cool. Oh, there we go. And obviously, this guy is based entirely on the Ice Soldier, or the Chillager, which I much prefer the name of, um, that was originally teased at the last Minecon. Obviously, we had a thing last time. Oh, I got a Frost Bloom Petal. Ooh, it's a cookie. Interesting. Um, but yeah, obviously, there was that Minecon where we had a bunch of different mobs. You know, the, the last mob vote where we had the Ice Soldier, uh, the Moo Bloom, and the Glow Squid. Obviously, the Glow Squid won. Personally, I would have liked the Moo Bloom. That's actually the one I voted for initially, and then vote. Ooh and then voted for the gold afterwards, but it's still pretty cool to see. Uh, extra arrows, always appreciated. Frost bloom petals are also pretty cool. There's a little fireplace back here, that's pretty awesome. I would like it if there was a real chimney here, to be honest, that would be really cool. That doesn't work, does it? No. Yeah, a real chimney would be cool on the inside, because that, that kind of looks like a death trap in my opinion. Um, oh, look, more blue ice, very cool. More arrows, always appreciated. Uh, again, gold, frost bloom petals, pretty cool. Let's have a look around the structure here, see if we can find anything else. There was a, uh, a Vindicator here before. I'm a little bit nervous to find him, because they are quite brutal. Um, although I don't see him now. Hello. One, two, dodge. I did not dodge that. <laughs> nope. And three. There we go. Uh, let's see. Barrel in here. More gold. Very nice. Lots of blue ice. <laughs> Poet. I do not know it. Uh, anything in here? Nothing as such. Let's see anything up here. A little outpost, pretty cool. Iron, frost blooms, gold, and of course blue ice as well. Uh, anything on the roof? Let me see. Uh, oh, there's so many of these guys around here. Uh, nothing that I can see. No, I don't think so. Let's get back inside again. This place is so cool though. It's like a little outpost, isn't it? You, know, you can see that guy's. You can see his legs animating. That's what it looks like. Walk again, buddy. Do a walk. Do a wander, please. I mean, we all know you're a... Look at that. Look at his legs. Ingenious. I mean, personally, if I was making a data pack which had custom mobs, I would just use custom entity models. Easily. But this dude actually animated his limbs manually using item models. It's so cool. It's such an ingenious use of that feature as well. I would have never thought of something like that. Anyway, I think it's time we explored inside, considering it's going nighttime as well. Uh, let's take a look over here. I'm going to lock myself in. <laughs> that is a Vindicator. Okay, I want to try and be careful with these guys, because Vindicators are tough. That's a lot of Vindicators. Okay, that is, that is a lot. How oh, many, <laughs> many Vindicators? Holy shit, that's a lot of indicators. Okay, I think it's best if we run. Okay, okay. One, two, three. One thing I'm thinking, by the way, it would be good if some of the pillagers that are spawning here had the banner, because it would mean that you could also use this place as a raid farm, because I believe currently that would actually work. Of course, of course, it's the one guy that shoots me that actually has poison on his cross. There we go. And, yeah, okay. That was a lot of pillagers. Holy shit. Okay, I think we should try that again. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about the isologers surrounding the place. Because... Oh, <laughs> so many. No. Please, have mercy. That is a lot of fucking pillagers. Oh my god, okay, they're strong. They are very fucking strong. Okay. They hit so hard. I'm wearing I'm wearing three pieces of diamond armor right now, would you believe it? They hit strong. I kind of want a new pillar. I think that might be a good idea. Can I blow them up, maybe? That'll probably work, actually. Die. Where have they gone? They're over there. Maybe I can just take them out from distance. That'll probably work, actually. Do you mind? I'm trying to hunt. <laughs> well, I'm getting hunted by Vindicators right now. Do you mind? Please, please, please. And here we see Scal tries to do PVE for once in his life. I catch off an emerald, nice. One. Come on. No, that's so strong. If I would have taken one hit there, I would have died. So nice to know that I could uh, kill that guy in just the right amount of time. Um, was there any more of these guys over here? I think there was one or two more, right? Yeah, there's one more guy. Take him out with a bow. Perfect. Um, and I think that should be the basement cleared. I see a few more ice soldiers. I don't know if these guys respawn. That's the thing. If they respawn, 
I'm probably going to stop trying to hunt them as much because... You can tell he's a wandering trader because he panics. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, oh, thank you for that. Thank you. And die. I wonder if he can hit himself with his eyes. Probably not. Jesus, that's strong. I'm going to have to reverse that one right there. See, we got that mirror with utterly perfect timing, didn't we? Okay, I think this place is clear now. Yeah, if we wouldn't have had that this episode, we would have died quite a few times now. We've had we've had so many slowness debuffs from all the husks and the chillagers, and there is another vindicator. Oh my god, okay. Another vindicator in here. Can I get him? Don't kill me, please. No, please. I'm so low. I think he might be able to one-hit me on this health. I'm a bit concerned. Oh, okay. Nothing else is really a concern. It's just he has a fucking axe. He has an axe and he swings it at the same speed as a sword because game is inconsistent. Hello, Mr. Creeper. And goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Mr. Creeper. Oh, can I please see the basement? Look at that thing. That is so cool. Any more of you guys in here? I don't think so. I think we're fine now. Sweet relief. Okay, more blue ice, more gold, more iron. Always appreciated. We can definitely trade up some of this gold next time. That would be really cool. Um, oh my god, nice. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambuls are actually quite valuable, so I'm going to grab that as well. Um, ooh, enchanting. Very nice. Some more arrows. We've used up a lot of arrows. I, I almost didn't bring the bow. I'm really glad that I did. Why the fuck is that culling? You've got to be shitting me. you <laughs> got to be kidding me. <laughs> they cull... On carpets? Are you serious? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that. Thank you, Creepers Code, for making me aware of that. Uh, okay, what else we got? Let's see, we got diamonds. Very nice. Uh, we've got my blue ice, more frost bloom, another frost bloom. Oh no, frost and petals, another frost bloom. So, uh, petals again, blue ice, diamonds. Nothing else in here. This is the big boy himself. Look at that. Oh, I almost don't want to break it. I'm gonna break it anyway. Frost bloom. Very cool. They do not stack. They are a carrot on a stick at the end of the day. Um, still really fucking cool. I think you might need to place them in snow, but I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a quick read of them, actually, before we leave. Uh, let's see here. So, Frostbloom. Frostbloom is an incredibly potent magical flower found in the Tundra Keep. It freezes blocks, makes snow around it, damages blazes, and heals snow golems. It also drops Frostbloom petals when bone mealed. Um, let's see. Any more information? The rate at which the Frostbloom lays down snow is proportional to the random tick speed. This means you can run slash game rule random tick speed 1000, and it'll start snowing at the super speed. This also occurs when you bone meal it. That is really intuitive. Very cool. Uh, can be found in the Tundra Keep 100% of the time. Ice soldiers also drop it about 5% of the time. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Okay, we have ourselves two frost blooms actually, and we can use frost bloom petals. So these things can actually be eaten. They are a cookie, and they will give us regeneration. Slowness too. That is not... Oh, and we get the freezing effect as well. Ooh, that is interesting. Can I just reverse it? Yes, I can. I can just... Uh, speed two. Look at that. Oh, Speed. Look at me go, bitch. <laughs> you want to see some real speed? Hey, well, I would say today was quite a success, to be completely honest. It was really cool to explore the Tundra Keep. And, of course, we got some really cool loot from that place as well. Uh, we now have a crap load of gold and iron, so it, it, no doubt in the next episode, or in between now and the next episode, I'm probably going to try and trade up a bunch of this uh, in the nether to the piglins. Uh, but, yeah, we also got our frost blooms, frost bloom petals. These things are awesome. I didn't realize how helpful they would be. Honestly, arguably, they're, they're only made helpful by the obsidian mirror, though, ever, because, obviously, if you eat one of these things, you get... Um, slowness and regeneration, but as soon as you reverse it using the mirror, you get regeneration and speed too, which is awesome. So honestly, if I had this thing with them breaking and mending, it would probably be amazing. So maybe we'll try and get a more powerful version of one of these in the future when we're better, you know, equipped with enchantments and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, for the meantime, I did say that I would find out what happens when you eat a puffer fish and use an obsidian mirror, so here we go. Um, ow. Puffer fish give you nausea, hunger, and poison. So we're gonna get... Night vision, interesting, and regeneration four. That's that's really strong. That is really really strong. <laughs> if we were fighting a wither, uh, it's a long time as well. If we were fighting a wither, regeneration four would make us basically immune to the wither effect. That's that's incredible. Oh, it used up loads of durability. Oh, <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh no. Well, the thing is, we do have a lot of these puffer fish, and we can make more of these quite easily now, since we do now have access to brown mushrooms and the appropriate things to make those as well. So yeah, in between this episode and the next, I'm going to make sure I've got myself that one last ender pearl that we definitely need to be able to explore the end, so we can start working with things like gobble rifts and also the you know positional anchors as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm also going to keep getting XP, enchant up my stuff, and we're going to be in a much better position. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and a comment. It's always appreciated. I'm you're glad to see that you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, a lot of you actually are enjoying this series which is which is amazing to me to be honest the last time i did an lp series it was a huge flop which was a shame uh, but now it seems with the data pack focus it can actually be quite interesting once again uh, but yeah anyway thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and hopefully i shall see you for the next one or in the next video which at this point will probably be Calesti version 020 so yeah thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next one take care have a very nice day and bye bye